most most dangerous. Hot fire. That is important. Mainstream. Keep it real. Got one of the biggest things in American culture. Yeah. Yeah. They not like us. Think everybody yeah. should go on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. You want to shake it up? They not like us. Bring the fuck up, Breakfast Club. DJ Envy. The people's choice, the family guy. Jess Hilarious. So my niece is real. And Charlemagne the God. Some dog duty days just saw themselves. Yo, I'm loving that energy up there right now. Sometimes you gotta pop out and show something. Now let's begin. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 yo
Last night, NBA, the Thunder beat the Mavericks 117-95, and the Celtics beat the Cavaliers 120-95. Now, Rudy Gobert, he wins the uh, fourth defensive player a year. Uh, this is the, four, the fourth time him winning that. People were mad at him, though, because he actually missed game two because of the birth of his child. I ain't seen nobody mad. I saw Gilbert Arenas mad at him. But there was a couple yeah. people upset that, well, yeah, he, that well, he missed well, that game. Those people are ridiculous. And not only are those people yeah. are ridiculous, they got to be kind of like idiots. I don't even think Gilbert Arenas was being serious. Yeah. This is the birth of your first child. Mm-hmm. Of course I'm going to miss the playoff game. Yeah. I don't give a damn about no playoff game. We'll be back. We'll be mm-hmm. all right. Mm-hmm. And they won that game, so yes. they were fine. How you how you going to be mad at a man because he chose to go see the birth of his first child as opposed to playing the game? I don't care if it's a playoff game or not. Yeah. It's not like it's game seven. Mm. I think that was so stupid. Yeah, it was was stupid. It'll be there when you get back. The baby? The baby? A lot of people were saying that. The baby be there when you get back. Like, Like, you'll be all right. No. You only get one time to see your first child be born. He's a first time father. Like, cut cut it out. I've been there for every last time my kids were born, and that's six of them. I don't care what's going on, where I'm at in this world. If wife's in labor or she's close Mm -hmm. to it, my ass is staying home. That's right. Now, Nick, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm oh, talking about Nick Cannon. Cannon. Oh, yeah. You know? You don't know if he was there for... Yeah. There's so many of it. One time, yeah. he can't even be in more than one places. Right. And by the but, way, those, those kids are going to be with you long after basketball is over. That's absolutely. Right. All right. Now, let's talk about Onyx Strip Club in Atlanta. We all know Onyx, right? If you don't, it's probably one of the biggest gentlemen clubs in Atlanta. Well, it seems like yesterday it got robbed. It's one of Atlanta's most popular strip clubs, Onyx Gentleman's Club on Cheshire Bridge Road, where many celebrities are known to party. But this iconic night spot became a crime scene early Monday morning after police say two thieves cut a hole in the roof and slipped in and out with $250,000 in cash. On Tuesday, we flew News Drone 2 over the building, where we could see that repairs are underway. They're probably experienced, probably put together some type of plan. Right now, police are calling this an ongoing investigation, but we know Onyx is closed on Sundays. So investigators believe the two thieves who were dressed in white ski masks and gloves cut a hole in the roof then climbed into the business where they spent two hours using power tools to break open the safes. Employees who asked us not to identify them because they're not authorized to speak with the media told us off camera that multiple surveillance cameras recorded the heist. There's also video of the thieves as they ran away from the scene. That's what you call a heist. Jesus. Okay, that's a that's an Alvin Gray Tubi movie. The brothers who robbed the strip club. <laughs> How you in the script club for two hours, though, with power tools and their surveillance cameras? Nobody is doing any surveillance? Nothing. Nobody was looking. <laughs> like, I'm surprised there's no alarm system. Because you said they had got some type yeah. of alarm system. Like, no motion detectors, no nothing. So for two hours, they were in there just working. Ghetto. And nobody paid any attention. Nobody noticed nothing. That's ghetto. Damn, and $250,000, I wonder how much was singles, because that's a lot of money, because you know strip clubs have a lot of singles as well, just sitting there. Yeah, that's an inside job. Jesus. That's, that's, that's a complete inside job. Mm-hmm. Now we got to talk about President Donald Trump. It looks like the uh, trial for his classified documents, uh, it looks like they're going to push that trial back. Judge Cannon making it clear that the trial over classified documents is delayed indefinitely in Florida. This federal indictment leads to the question of whether this trial would begin before the November election. And I think they would be safe to say that this order here from Judge Cannon in Florida answers that question. And so we could very well be looking at a reality that the only criminal trial, only one of four that Donald Trump is facing here uh, that will take place before the November election will be this one here that is now in its fourth week in New York over the alleged hush money payment scheme. So none of them matter because if you become president, (laughs) <laughs> like what you going to do? You think, uh, you think they're going to prosecute a sitting president? You think nope. a sitting president is going to be coming uh, back and forth nope. uh, for trials nope. anywhere in America? Nope. No, it's not happening. All right. Well, that is front page news. When we come back next hour, we'll tell you about Stormy Daniels. She, t- she took the stand yesterday and talks about uh, how she met Trump. She talks about uh, allegedly spanking him and also how mm-hmm. he went to dinner in his PJs, his pajamas. Okay. He's ready for action. Okay, Spank. All right. Uh-huh. We'll get to that next hour, and that is front page news. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800 585 1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake up. Whether you're mad, or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God. 
just hilarious. I hope everything's going well with your pregnancy. This is Tahir Scott out here in D.C. at the Real H.U. Howard University. I just want to say how blessed I am. The Real H.U., you know how it is. Mm-hmm. I just want to say how blessed I am this week. I'm graduating. Hey, it's been up all four years. Thank you, thank you. And then I just wanted to shout out my clothing brand. We just recently released our basic tee um, at XOX Worldwide on Instagram. You can find us on, on online as well, XOXWorldwide.com. Well, That's con- all I just had to say. Well, congratulations. I Absolutely. know your, your class is probably one of the most difficult ones because you had to do it during COVID when you graduated from high school. And then I know the first two years were a little nasty, but congratulations. You got through yeah. it, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, man. Hello, who's this? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, sorry. Uh, good morning, DJ Envy. Good morning. Good morning, Charlemagne. Peace. How are you? I'm good. Good morning, beautiful, beautiful Jess. Good morning. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm talking to you. So, I wanted to say congratulations on the pregnancy and getting on a Breakfast Club. Me and my husband, DV. Love you. We think you are so funny. Thank you, baby. Um, you're welcome. When you came to St. Louis, um, we came, we went and saw your show. And when I tell you, we just be cracking up. We mm-hmm. love you on Wildin' Out. And you just bring such a, a great dynamic to the show. Thank you, babe. I appreciate that. She you're, sure does. You're so welcome. Charlemagne. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you know how you go hard for black authors, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so my sister, she just debuted her her book yesterday, and it's called Izzy's Almost Epic Day. Izzy's Almost and Epic know, Day? Yes, yes. Okay. And you can find it on Phoenix Media and Books. Phoenix Media and Books. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All three of you guys have young children. Please, please check her out. Please. Her name is Katie Odie. Katie Odie. Okay. Katie Odie. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much. All right. Mama. Thank you, guys. No thank you. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. Everything with me is blessed. Call up now. 800-585-1051. Not just me. I'm what the culture feeling. Hello, who's this? This is Nicole from Baltimore, and I don't say to and you. Good morning, y'all. Jesus. Good morning, y'all. I still know <laughs> she from me. It's talking about y'all. Y'all. <laughs> What's, What's up, up dummy? Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, my God. Tell them that everybody do not answer the dummy down here. Huh. No, we do not. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle yep. Charlotte. We don't, okay? Yes, well, what's up, Nicole? I'm calling because... I'm just so angry. I went downstairs this morning in the kitchen to go get something that I wanted. And I knew it was there. And now it's not. But I buy things for everybody else to utilize. And y'all still touching my stuff. Who ate it? And what was it? It was a drink. And my daughter drinks my drinks. And I want to bought Simpson her sometime. Boy, that's your daughter. You can bought Simpson if you want to. Your daughter. (laughs) <laughs> Do you, why you just don't put little like stickies on it I'll just tell her this is my drink don't drink it cause she's still gonna drink it probably but when we go to exactly when we go to the store I buy things for me and then I buy things for the house but for some reason my things still disappear I don't understand mm. it's really 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 frustrating and she hit me because she's getting ready for school <laughs> and she's still gonna do it that's just the sad part that's you, the sad part you know what's crazy mama is really the most disrespected person in the house and that's only because everybody uh, really truly lives off mama like yep. we, like the kids came everything that belongs to mama belongs, belongs to them, them. yeah mm-hmm. cause my kids will eat off mama plate but they won't even come to daddy plate but they'll eat all mama plate mm. <laughs> they ain't messing with daddy plate but let me tell you something I'll, she'll ask me to do something I'll be like did you ask your father he told me to come ask you what oh yeah I've done I, that, that plenty of yeah, times yeah that's me yeah ask, go ask your mother cause I, there's things that I don't know <laughs> I don't know all the details and you're trying to be slick. Go ask your mama. Mm, growing up, that's what I did, too. So I, I did really... that. I did that. I'm so <laughs> angry. Well, I'm here to tell you, you probably wanna... ain't going to get no better, babe. So all you can do is call us and get it off your chest. Well, enjoy them. And this weekend <laughs> is Mother's Day. So enjoy it. Make, make them work for Mother's Day, then. Oh, trust me. I get that in. That's my only vet time. I get that in. I, I Yeah. 
Yeah, I need right. to go downstairs all the way downstairs and give me one spoon. Just you, go downstairs. You gonna, you, you gonna end up you gonna end up cooking dinner for everybody on Mother's Day. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I wish I wish. <laughs> I wish I wish. Have a good one, Nicole. You know my restaurant. You too. Thank y'all. Yeah, I heard, I heard it. You too. I heard you, it. You too. We heard it. Yep. Girl, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, who's this? Good morning to my Breakfast Club family. It's your boy Lovey from the Bronx, aka Mr. Thirteen and a Half. What's goody? Love you. Still introducing lovey. yourself as Mr. Thirteen and a Half. Thirteen and a Half. What? That's your shoe size. Good morning, Jess. How you doing, beautiful? Good morning. I'm good. <laughs> What's up, Lovey? Talk to us. Oh, oh, Jess, don't know about you, Lovey. No, I don't oh, know. Oh, Jess, don't know. No. no. Well, Jess, I don't. I don't want to interrupt your pregnancy, but but thirteen and a half. We'll, we'll talk about it off there. But anyway. Okay. Respect. <laughs> I don't, I don't want you to go into labor or nothing early, so, right, you know. Love me, okay. all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but, but I want to tell you how you guys inspired me. You and Envy, you know I look up to y'all, you know, coming doing radio. So I, I'm writing my first book. And I want to ask you, with, with Charlamagne, when you wrote Shook One and, and when Envy, when you and your wife wrote your book, how did you, did you leave out any details or you just ran through your rough draft and you went back and critiqued it? How did you do that? that that's really, really my big question. I didn't. I, I didn't leave out any 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 details. I mean, but you know, you 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 write a book when you when you write a book, you go back and forth with that book several several times before you actually turn in a you know your your your, fi your final draft. And I mean, yeah, there's certain things that you know your editor or maybe your publisher will, will recommend and be like, oh, maybe you should take this out, especially for for legal reasons, especially you know uh, stories that involve other people and using other people's real names, things like that. But other than that, nah, I ain't leave nothing up. Yeah, I was the same. There was some things that legally we had to change, whether it was names or we couldn't say certain things because illegally you didn't want to get in trouble. But besides that, we pretty much kept everything in. Now, I think that's the thing with writing a book, right? You want everything to be authentic. You want everything to be real. It's your life, right? So I kind of wrote everything in that we could. Right. So like I said, man, I'm inspired by y'all. And I also, the last part of this is I got approved to be a foster parent. And being a single father... I think that's my way of paying forward. Would you? Would you? You think you would do that, Envy? Would you do that, Charlemagne or Jess? Would you? Would you be a foster parent, knowing that Hell yes. we see the problem out here Hell with yes. these children running wild because they have no direction, Hell but we don't yes. want to do anything about it? So I don't know. God put it in my heart Hell to do yes. this. And Listen, anybody? Absolutely. You hear people having these conversations about you know how uh, you know black fathers aren't in the households or you know um, people are growing up without fathers but these brothers that be having these conversations they don't have no mentorship programs right or no they have they ever had any kids of their own or have they ever tried to adopt so I respect what you're doing lovey salute to you that thing is a great thing lovey yo I love you brothers man Jess we'll talk about it later Jess don't worry okay all right lovey thank you and, lo and lovey I, I love y'all have a blessed day love you. And, and just don't just just don't start off with your application that you missed the 13 and a half that might not get you <laughs> passed that was <laughs> Don't say that on the application. Gotcha, <laughs> All First right, of all, if you were to say that on the application trying to adopt a child, they'd probably arrest him. But that's what I said. Don't say that. You always talk to Mr. 13 and a half. The fact you would even think that, we need to arrest you. Or at I least just, investigate you. Oh my like, gosh. why would you even think that? Gosh. <laughs> like, I just thought it was about the shoe size. That's, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. Jess with the mess coming up. What are we talking about? Yes, there was a shooting outside of Drake's Toronto mansion. Oh, my God, no. We'll get into that. Yes, that's what I said when I saw it. I was like, uh-uh. Mm -mm. All right. Oh. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious. Charlamagne, the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess. The news is real. Weather. Well, Jess Hilarious. Hilarious. Just to Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. <laughs> she don't spare nobody. <laughs> Worldwide Jess, worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a culture shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. There was a shooting outside of Drake's home in Toronto earlier yesterday morning around 2 a.m. And it was reportedly a drive-by shooting. Um, police did confirm that they did catch the shooting on camera. It was confirmed that Drake was not harmed or injured in the shooting, and it was never even uh, revealed whether he was there or not. Uh, one of Drake's security guards who was standing outside of the front gate was shot in the chest, and he is now in critical condition. Damn. Um, now, while news outlets were reporting on the shooting, a news anchor on Eyewitness News ABC7 said this. Lots of questions tonight about a security guard who was shot outside the mansion of the raper 
a rapper, rapper I should say, Drake in Toronto. Drake's 50,000 square foot, $100 million dollar Toronto mansion, swarming with police Tuesday morning. Police say a car with multiple people driving past the front gates overnight around 2 a.m., opening fire on a security guard who had been posted out front on duty. Investigators not saying if the hip-hop icon was home at the time, but say they do have some surveillance video of the incident. It is hard to ignore. The shooting is on the heels of a very ugly public Public rap beef between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. I think it's strange that people are trying to connect this to uh, Kendrick and Drake because because we keep talking about the false narratives the media creates. But right now, I see people creating this false narrative themselves because this situation happened in a whole other country. Why y'all even incriminating Kendrick or Drake in this? We don't know the details of anything. Mm -hmm. Why jump to conclusions and speculate and say this had to had something to do with them? Why? Right. They also said the fact that Drake's OVO store in London was vandalized with "They Not Like Us" all over the store. That's just overzealous. <laughs> but that's fans. different. That's yeah. different. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's fans mm -hmm. trying to be St funny. Stands actually. Yeah, that's yeah. stands trying to be funny. It's some of the OGs in the game that's not feeling the beat for the direction, whether they uh, believe that the shooting is in connection or not to the beef. Questlove shared that nobody won the war. This was not about skill. This was a wrestling match level miss mudslinging and takedown by any means necessary. Talking about women and children, and um, hip hop is truly dead. Um, he don't want to see R.I.P. post. Uh, all of that why are you painting that narrative, Quest? It, 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 listen, do I think that both Kendrick and Drake went to hell on each other? They yes. Did. But mm -hmm. Jay-Z and Nas were doing the same type of mudslinging. There was women and children mm -hmm. being talked about in that situation, too. Yeah, it was, it was definitely mudslinging. I, like you said, it, it was it was a battle. And I think it went too far. I think, like you said, I think it went to hell. I don't, I don't think it need to go there. I, I didn't like it. I like the fact that they went back and forth and they responded to each other. It made it felt it made hip hop fun again to me mm -hmm. but I didn't like when they started talking about the kids the and, pedophile the rapist and all that and, that was a little too and far and of course you was playing drums when Jay-Z was uh, mudslinging <laughs> okay oh we, 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 the North remembers alright oh. I'm just saying <laughs> so he was the first Metro yeah, in a way. Okay. <laughs> he didn't make the beat, but he yeah. didn't make the beat, but oh, he, he, was, he, he was doing the unplugged yeah. and performing takeover. He okay. was right there. I'm just okay. saying. You know? uh, Corrupt also did an interview with Bootleg Kev, and he said this. If y'all ain't ready to fight, stop it. Just battle, you know, like the other battlers. M uh, a murder right, mook in there. Right. This ain't funny to me, my Not he. When I went to war, my wanted to fight. Right. It was real. When Tupac and Biggie was into it, it was real. This this shit ain't real, cuz. Now, mother Drake bodyguard gets shot. No, it's connected to the battle. Delmar, don't do that. This Life is, is precious, my For sure. So if y'all ain't gonna fight, stop it. Other we than that, cuz, that mother uh, record right there was banging. <laughs> <laughs> it really was banging, though. Boom, 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 boom. A minor. But now let me ask you a question. When those battle rappers do it, they go just as low. Like they mm. go crazy Like the battle rapper Sometimes I'm like I'm surprised they didn't fight But then oh, after yeah. battle It's over Yeah They can battle again But it's over Can can this happen It's, it's, it's different though It's like watching uh, Violence in a In a in an octagon As opposed to watching That kind of fight Just out in a bar mm. You know so what I'm saying This was out in the bar yeah, it's, it's well organized Sanctioned You know Violence when it's in the <laughs> octagon Or when it's at a, a, a Battle rap You know My whole thing is If you're gonna speculate It's much better ser Scenarios you could use How about a security You know Guard got shot Outside the weekend's Manager's house A couple weeks ago yep. Weekend and Drake Got issues Uh, You know How come you don't Connect those dots Because the weekend Don't rap Huh If the mm -hmm. weekend rapped Y'all would connect the dots on, you know, what if that security got shot outside the weekend manager's house and this security got shot in retaliation? Mm -hmm. But because the weekend don't rap, y'all don't connect those dots. They ain't looking at them. That's all I'm simply saying. Because he be singing. R, what mm. if, what if, what? what if, what? That security guard was the mole. That was feeding. Oh, stop it. No, don't start that. Because people, people go with that. that I heard on the Breakfast Club, Charlamagne said that was the mole. Uh, that security guard was the mole that was feeding Kendrick all the information. But it's so many And the owls had to do what say. they had to do. Now, this is a Goodfellas uh, just saying, conversation. This is a Goodfellas episode. I'm just saying there's other, now, there's there's other scenarios you could speculate <laughs> on. Mold, and all I, of a sudden. I just feel like saying this is between Kendrick and Drake is a little lazy. Man, okay. It. Mm. Now he's the mole. He didn't get shot in the front. He got shot in the back. And like, come on, y'all can die. Y'all can dive a little deeper down the rabbit hole if you want to. That's all I'm simply saying. Uh, oh my goodness. Joe Claire and Russell Simmons went live. Um, he well, they didn't go live together. But Russell Simmons he spoke on the beef between Kendrick and Drake, and um, also spoke on people celebrating the downfall of these black men, including Diddy and the suit he had to say to the people. Watching our brothers fall is hurtful. Having everybody get together and laugh at our brothers fall 
or supporting the tearing down of our brothers. It's tough. They may think it's, you know, entertaining. Some of the memes are funny, but we have to look up, train our minds to see the good in things and not the negative. Uh, Russell's conflating a lot of different things. Which because, uh, yes, there are people who just simply celebrate folks' downfall, but, mm -hmm. I mean, if you believe these things that have been said about a ditty, then it's not necessarily people celebrating uh, somebody's downfall. They're celebrating the fact that somebody's held liable. Uh, is, is finally being held accountable, right, mm -hmm. for the, for their actions. And that's I, what that's what that is. And I'm with you. Yeah, if 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 he's found guilty, if yeah, th th those women and those people should get justice. And if mm -hmm. that man, if that means he has a downfall, he has a downfall. Yeah. Those people need to get the justice. If, Russell's conflating. Russell's conflating two different two different things. Mm -hmm. I know Diddy. A lot of different things. It's pissed listening to these records. Like I'm fighting these allegations and y'all just throwing them at each other back and forth. <laughs> or you a woman beater? Or you a pedophile? You a pedophile? LeBron and, and and Steph Curry need to stay away from you. Hide the families. What? I know Diddy is it's like just, he's like it's just content for y'all, but it was charges for <laughs> me. Charges. Cost me money. Oh God, okay. my house got raided. Can he go outside? <laughs> Damn it, man! All right, well Boy. that is just with the mess. Yes. Now when we come back, we got front page news. We got to talk Stormy Daniels. She was on the stand yesterday in the Trump trial, and she talked about how they met and even spanking the former president. Mm -hmm. We'll get to it next. It's the Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Yesterday in sports, the Thunder beat the Mavericks 117.95 and the Celtics beat the Cavaliers 120.95. Come on, Cavs. And I stand on the fact that I want the West Coast games to be earlier, okay? Let's bump <laughs> up all the games. Let's start the East Coast games at 6, okay? So then the West Coast games will start around 8.39 and then, you know... We can watch some of it and all be in bed at a reasonable time. The yeah, West Coast is not going to want to watch the games at 3 o'clock. Because that's why there. I don't watch them. Because they're so late. Oh, yeah? Could yeah. you stop lying? You can volunteer and lie. <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> like, there was no reason for that. Now, the NBA fined Jamal Murray $100,000 for tossing a heat pack onto the court. He was so upset with the calls, with the refs, that first he threw a towel. The towel didn't make it to the court. And then he threw uh, one of those heat packs. Uh, he was fined $100,000 for throwing that heat pack. Damn. Well, they, at least they didn't suspend him. They should have suspended him. No, they shouldn't. Yes, they should have. Well, he threw that dollars. heat pack on the court while they were playing in the middle of a game. Somebody could have slipped on that. Somebody mm. could have fell on that. It wasn't like it was a timeout. Like, True. That yeah. was foul. But the Timberwolves are up 2-0. Yeah. If, if the Nuggets would have won and it was 1-1, he probably would have got suspended for game three. Mm. They can't risk them going down 3-0. Okay? Mm. Yeah, you can't do that. Though. Nah, not with, not with your defending uh, NBA champions. You can't risk them going down. Might as well just throw that Ant-Man. And why you throw it on the floor? Just hit Ant-Man in the head with it. I'm just saying. Mm. All right. Now, we got to talk about uh, Stormy Daniels. She testified in the hush money proceedings with Donald Trump. And she had a lot to say. The atmosphere here at the courthouse is electric today. Stormy Daniels is the most anticipated witness in this case. It was the first time Trump has come face to face with her since their alleged dalliance 17 years ago. Stormy began by describing how she first met Trump in 2006 at a golf tournament in Lake Tahoe. Later that day, she says Trump's trusted bodyguard, Keith Schiller, invited her to have dinner with Trump in his suite at the hotel. She says Trump was waiting for her dressed in satin pajamas. Does Hugh Hefner know you stole his pajamas? She says she told him. She testified that they talked about Melania. He showed me a few pictures and things, and I said, your wife is very beautiful. He said, don't worry about that. We don't even sleep in the same room. She says they also talked about Ivanka. He said, you remind me of my daughter because she's smart, blonde, and beautiful, and people underestimate her. Trump looks uncomfortable as Stormy was talking about Melania and Ivanka. He had a scowl on his face and was shaking his head. The porn star then told the court she picked up a magazine and swatted him on the butt with it. Several citizens on the jury giggled, but Trump turned to his attorneys in disgust, using choice words, claiming the story was a bunch of bull. <laughs> Another part that they, they, they didn't see that we didn't have the audio for it. They said that uh, when she went to the bathroom, he uh, allegedly was laying on the bed in his uh, tidy whities mm. uh, and, they, and they asked, was he wearing a condom? Uh, she said no. He said. She said. Uh, they asked, "Was that concerning?" She said, "Yes." She said, "After, allegedly, he said, oh, it was great. Let's get together. Let's get together again, honey bunch.'" And she said she just wanted to leave. Do they realize how ridiculous this looks uh, to, to so many people? Like, what else are you supposed to wear in bed if you're having sex? A suit and tie? 
You're supposed to have on drawers. <laughs> like, what, what, like, what, 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 what is that supposed to prove? Like, what is that proving? Like, you're having sex. Even of course the, you're going to be laying in your drawers. You yeah. think you're going to humiliate a person by detailing that they was laying in their drawers in bed while having sex? What else are they supposed to be wearing? <laughs> This is kind of crazy, yo. <laughs> they this they think this is gonna humiliate them, but it's not. Like I, yeah. I, I think this is not gonna have the uh, uh, the impact that that they are hoping that it has. Even the remarks about his daughter and his wife, like he said, don't worry about that. You know, what and, I mean? that's what you're supposed to tell. Like that's right. Like why? You know why? <laughs> why you bring my life up? My wife. Yeah. You here? You know what you're here to do? Right. Mm. Like, oh. I, I, I don't know, man. Mm. <laughs> it is funny though. But anyway, also you know about the five second rule. And by the way, you, what? I don't like how y'all spun that spanking story. I thought y'all I was telling me that. Like, it was really, like, I really was ready. Like, it was, like she had a paddle. <laughs> yeah. She was going. And because, you know, some people, like, they have fetishes. Some dominate. Like, like, the dom- bondage, what's it called? Dom- bo- yeah, dom- dom- dominatrix. You know, the matrix. I don't know about your freaky life. Not the matrix. I don't know about your freaky life. All I said was she spanked him. And she did. No, nah, that no, wasn't really no spanking. No, that was not a. That was a playful grab yeah. a magazine, tap, tap. Yeah. I had that. I thought mm-hmm. you about to tell me something. Like, that big orange ass was in the air. Yeah, what? Like, like, you know he what wanted it. like he wanted it. Like, I ain't, what, you ain't telling me nothing. About? He was poking it out. And she was What's wrong with y'all? That's actually, like, a fetish. That's People right. love that. Face so, down Trump up. That's What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you about to tell me something. Yeah, a little magazine. Face down Trump up. No, no, that's the Oh, my happen. God. But now, let's move on. You know about the five-second rule, right? What? No. Charlamagne, you know the five-second rule? Yeah, if you drop it on the floor... Yeah, if you, you pick it up on the floor, five, if you oh, pick it up with it. Pick it up and kiss it a girl, you can still eat it. You were still on Trump when I said five second rule? Yeah, I was no, like, what no. is that? <laughs> we moved uh, okay. on. I still do that now. Well, you shouldn't do that anymore. Yeah. And this is why a doctor says you shouldn't do the five second rule anymore. If you've ever shouted five second rule when food hits the floor, I've got news for you. This is a pretty big deal. There's a recent survey showed that half of people are happy to eat food after it's been on the floor. Scientists called Dawson and colleagues wanted to settle this matter once and for all, checking the bacterial transfer onto food on different surfaces like wood, tile, and carpet. Firstly, they found that dangerous bacterial colonies like Salmonella and Campylobacter can live on the floor for up to four weeks. When food's dropped on tile surfaces, it picks up 99% of the colonies there instantly. On wood, it varies, but usually it's about 50% of the colonies or less, so a bit safer. But on carpet, less than 0.5% of the bacterial colony is actually transferred to the food when it's picked up in less than 5 seconds. Colony transfer does increase the longer the food stays there. So the 5 second rule doesn't apply unless it's on a carpet, but don't risk it. You eat off the floor. So they're saying 99% of, of bacteria jumps to your food if it's on tile, 50% of the uh, bacteria goes on wood. And if you have carpet, you good money. Yo, Charlemagne is pissed off. He can't eat off the floor. <laughs> I'm still, I'm, first of all, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> Dear doctor, shut the F up forever. I was raised on a dirt road in Mount Corner, South Carolina. I've been doing this for 45 years, okay? I'll be 46 on June 29th, 1978. Uh-huh. I was born in the 1900s, okay? That's why people's immune system is not as strong as those of us born in the 1900s. <laughs> That's right. Okay? Shut up. All right? I don't want nothing in our system. Just no, nothing. The only floor you don't eat off is the bathroom floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's why, it. why are you even taking food in the bathroom? That's it. The yeah. bathroom floor. And maybe floors that's not yours. It's not like I do this in public. But if I'm at home, okay, if I'm at home and something drop, you pick it up, you eat it. It's just not the bathroom floor. Only at home. I don't do that at restaurants. If you drop in the restaurant, it stays there. Yeah, I don't do it. No, yeah, I don't think no I do it. not at yeah. restaurants. Yeah. No. I, I've done, you do it at your home or your grandma's house. Places that you are comfortable, you yeah. know, that you... That you have uh, really frequented. Not Unless no front. it's like a oxtail or like a lamb chop, like because you know meals that oh, that's they not cost too much. That's you, yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> thank you, God. Please. God. That's right, man. Stop playing with me. I man. ain't go front. Every once in a while, McDonald's fry fall on the floor on the carpet. I pick that right up. A fry, At home, a right? McDonald's fry. fry yeah, fry. If, if it falls on the carpet, yes. Oh my god! It'd be like last Friday now. Y'all don't. I right, forget it. All right, and that no. is front page. I still no. cost, bro. You know what I still cost a pound? Yes. Out there? Or like a piece of lamby, or if you cutting the steak. Shh. Rich ass. <laughs> no, Rich, you got to be to drop a piece of lamb chop on the floor and just leave it there. <laughs> All right. When we come Trump back, job, Angela Rye and Marilyn Mosby will be joining us. Ex Baltimore prosecutor Marilyn Mosby, man, she was convicted of, of mortgage fraud. That's you right. Know, they convicted her. They said she lied to a mortgage lender uh, in 2021 and she purchased a vacation property in Florida. And now she's facing 40 years. 
numbers. It's more to the story. Yeah, but it's not, a lot more to the not, story. It's not that, That's it's the headline. Not just that. Yeah, yes. she, she got a, a bunch of police officers locked up for doing uh, wrong. And she'll, talk, she'll talk about it when she come back. And and they on her ass. But she's facing 40 years. Yes, it's a, it's she a, is. I think it's a grave injustice, but we'll discuss. When we come back. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody is DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. We have former Baltimore City State Attorney Marilyn Mosby. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank I'm you. We also have Angela Rye here as well. Hello. Hello, Miss Rye. We, we, why y'all both got on camouflage? Y'all we going ready, to for, ready for, ready for okay. war? We're ready for war. It wasn't even on purpose. It's being on one accord. We're ready for war. Taylor was too earlier. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. How are you, though, Marilyn? How are you feeling? I feel grateful. Mm hmm. Um, it's been really, really hard. I mean, we'll get into the case, but no, I have been accused of doing something that I have not done. Mm -hmm. I'm innocent. I'm facing 40 years for withdrawing funds from my retirement savings. Mm -hmm. Um, the United States government, a global superpower is actually coming for me. Um, and so it's, it's been hard and it's been daunting, but I feel blessed because I have people in my corner like the great Angela Rye, mm-hmm. right? This bold, beautiful, brilliant black woman who is using her platform to heighten what I'm going through. I mean, the only thing I can say is, is gratitude. Let's start from the beginning. Now. Well, you were Baltimore uh, City State's Attorney, so yeah, you were doing yeah, your yeah. job. Yeah. Um, and then it, it took a shift. When did it start taking a shift? When did the government start attacking you and for what reason? So five months into my first term, unfortunately, A young black man by the name of Freddie Carlos Gray Jr. was killed Mm -hmm. in the custody of police when he was unconstitutionally arrested, placed into a metal wagon, head first, feet shackled and handcuffed. Mm -hmm. And his pleas for medical attention were ignored. I followed the facts with the law. I wouldn't do anything differently, but I charged those police officers. And at that time, I was one of the first prosecutors in the country to attempt to hold police officers accountable for the death death of a black man Mm -hmm. and so that wasn't happening in this country and so it immediately came with a great deal of backlash you know i got hate mail and death threats Mm -hmm. people describing how my then my now ex-husband would come out of our house and he would be killed and how no police officers would respond it was a lot this is pre-trump this Mm -hmm. is you know i had a social media was it was off the chain this is before we you know you get kind of get used to it now but this had a red nation rising Mm -hmm. um where they were sending me all kinds of like hate mail and it, it, it was it was insane um but that's when they started to come for my law license uh they were trying to you know do whatever they could to break me mm-hmm. and what we learned out of that case those officers were acquitted um and in my opinion the the police department sabotaged the case but we learned our, our lessons so in 2016 when i dismissed it we put out a slate of police accountability reform proposals um, that were subsequently adopted nationally after George Floyd. Mm-hmm. You can go on record and you can see those same sort of proposals. We also learned our lessons in that during my tenure, we then subsequently prosecuted 33 police officers successfully. Mm-hmm. Right? Not just the, you didn't go after just the Freddie Gray police officers. 33 other police officers success, successfully. Anybody that preyed upon the vulnerabilities of the citizens of Baltimore mm-hmm. had to deal with my office. Mm-hmm. There was a gun trace task force. This was one of the largest police corruption scandals in the history of the country, where for decades you had officers planting guns and drugs on citizens. And so understanding that the credibility of those officers were at issue, you know, we drafted legislation, lobbied for legislation, mm-hmm. went against my my colleagues across the state, and we were able to pass a vacature statute that in the interest of justice gave prosecutors mechanisms to vacate the convictions. Imagine, you know, individuals like that making claims on citizens mm-hmm. and and they're lying. Mm-hmm. So we had to review thousands of cases and ultimately through that legislation that we 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 created we vacated the convictions of over 800 individuals. Mm-hmm. And that ain't getting you no know, fans in law enforcement and police unions. Oh, absolutely That's not. Right. I mean, it- yeah, especially when the lead prosecutor on the gun trace task force, I'm going to say this part because she shouldn't, um, the gun trace task force, Leo Wise, which is a lawyer who, before he went to the Maryland U.S. Attorney's Office, worked on Capitol Hill. All of his targets were black people. He goes there. He prosecutes these gun trace task force members Five of them are black. Three of them are white. He doesn't go after their boss. 
Marilyn says, oh, well, since we're th- you're finding corruption, we're going to make sure that we review all these cases. I think that this man's ego didn't allow for him to see that that was actually beneficial. If there was someone who did wrong by the law, then the conviction should be overturned. He took that as a personal affront. Not only was he the lead prosecutor on the case against Marilyn, he donated to her political opponents. Mm. That in and of itself should be a material conflict that got him removed from the cases against her. So they went after her. They were looking for things over and over again. Donald Trump said that he was going to um, go after the protesters after during the George Floyd unrest in this country and targeted Baltimore as one of them. That's not the first time he named Chick Marilyn. <laughs> Two months after, well, they wrote an op-ed saying, if you come to our cities, if you send the feds to our cities, we're going to prosecute the feds. Another bold move by her. Mm-hmm. Two months after that, she was under federal investigation. That's not by accident. That's not happenstance. Mm-hmm. Now, before we get to the case, right, what other things were they doing to you that you started to notice? Like, when did you realize, like, okay, they on on my ass? So, I mean, I understood and recognized that, you know, challenging the status quo wasn't Mm -hmm. just my, you know, attempts to to balance the skills of justice when it comes to holding police officers accountable. There were a great deal of other, like, reforms that we put into place. Mm -hmm. Um, You guys covered it at one point. We stopped prosecuting low-level um, marijuana, marijuana possession cases, right, mm-hmm. in the city of Baltimore before it was legalized because there was an expectation that, you know, that the guys in certain neighborhoods, they could get the substance use. And unfortunately, we wanted to criminalize black folks even after we did decriminalize 10 grams or less in marijuana and the police were responsible for issuing citations. 95% of the citations that they were issuing were issued to one particular, one out of nine police districts. That district that they were issuing the citations happened to be 95% black and disproportionately impoverished, right? And so when we look at that fact that there's no disparate use among white and black people when it comes to mere possession of marijuana, in, in America, if you're a white person, you're, you, you're, I mean, a black person, you're four times more likely to be arrested for mere possession of, of marijuana. Mm-hmm. However, in the city of Baltimore, you were six times more likely. And what I said is we're not I'm never going to be complicit in discriminatory enforcement of laws against poor black and brown people. So my colleagues would call me morons. You know, they were constantly attacking me. And and this was nothing new because people are always going to be resistant to change. I understood that. I recognized that. You know, I started the first conviction integrity unit in the entire state of Maryland where we did reinvestigations into claims of actual innocence. And under my tenure, we exonerated 13 innocent black men who collectively served 300 years in prison for crimes they didn't commit. I started a sentencing review unit where we released and modified the sentence of over 60 individuals that are the juvenile lifers in the elderly prison population. Mm-hmm. And so when you're going against the status quo and you're attempting to reduce the jail population and in a, a system that has disproportionately impacted and has based their business model off the backs of black and brown people, I knew people were going to come for me. I just didn't think that they were going to use this system against me in a way in which I would be wrongly convicted and, and face the same sort of, of reality yeah. as all of those exonerees. All right, we have more with Marilyn Mosby and Angela Rye. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking with Marilyn Mosby. She was the state attorney for Baltimore from 2015 to 2023, and right now she's brought up on charges of fraud. Charlemagne? The, the the indictment that happened in 2022 that was the first time they 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 came for you. So the feds actually for five years mm-hmm. they had been investigating every aspect of my life. Mm. They made it very public because they wanted to 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 create this narrative that I was somehow a villain and, and corrupt. And so I was shocked when they came back and they indicted me of withdrawing my own money the money that i put away every two weeks out of my in my retirement savings the baltimore deferred compensation retirement account the yes a deferred compensation account and they said that and made it out to be as if i was i was utilizing ppp loans or covet relief right. funding right like no this is this is literally my money now it's Adverse financial consequence legally is different than a financial hardship. A financial hardship has been defined. There is precedence already set for it. But an adverse financial consequence has not been legally defined. 
what I was attempting to do was to access my money. And I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I wanted to be able to access my money. I called, you know, nationwide. They told me, hey, there's this provision. If you meet any of this criteria, right? And again, adverse financial consequence. Then and there's a recorded call of you calling nationwide where you ask, it's very clear that she's asking for clarification on how this can this money can be accessed and withdrawn and what i was told was that i could i could access my money what the government put on the stand is that david randall who's the executive director for the deferred compensation fund for baltimore city he said all you needed to do was suffer a 50 dollar adversity and you could access your money mm -hmm. 739 people in the city of baltimore did the exact same thing that i did and i'm the only person in america that has now been targeted, prosecuted, and convicted of doing this and facing 40 years in jail. I don't know if you know this part, but it's actually United States overall, 35,000 people did the same th thing withdrawing from their retirement, their retirement accounts. None of them were prosecuted either. And I think that's an important part. The thing that I think we got to be mindful of today and on this show is Marilyn is still facing 40 years in prison. Well, you've been convicted, Her, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's facing 40 years in prison. Her sentencing is on May 23rd. The judge who, frankly, again, this is not Marilyn talking. This is me to be very clear. The judge who um, ruled against her defense team, mostly on every motion um, and mostly on every objection, is responsible for her sentencing. She cannot prosecute this case on air or anywhere else because the judge could use that against her. And so I think we've got to be mindful about what we're saying and how we're saying it. Um, what you're saying is is a thousand percent true, but she is a former prosecutor and she can't prosecute her own case. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Rob. From a protective standpoint, we just got to be you, mindful of that. So, from what I'm hearing is as and and you could clarify this. So it's pretty much saying, hey, the feds don't like her, and we're gonna find anything possible we can to shut her down. You were, you feel like you were targeted? Well, it, it's not just the feds, right? Like like Angela has already outlined. It was the prior administration. So that's Trump's administration. Mm -hmm. That was very clear. When I prosecuted those offices in Freddie Gray, he said, I think she ought to prosecute Prosecutor herself. Mm -hmm. he, William Barr, which was his attorney general, called out Baltimore, called out a number of other progressive, what he said were social justice reform prosecutors that were negating and diminishing the rule of law. Yeah. He said at a press conference in February of 2020, we will do anything to any jurisdiction. The Department of Justice will do anything we need to to ensure any jurisdiction or any individual politician is conforming with the rule of law. They opened up an investigation into me in October, the moment that Leo Wise became the, the individual with the pattern of discriminatory investigation against people of color came they opened that investigation and and this is this is all related to this prior administration what has who has the power now to do something about that is this administration and that that's where you know angela can tell you about what what we have going on i think the difficult part here is um there's something very simple that the biden administration could have done at the outset and that is to review all of the Department of Justice mm -hmm. cases that were currently open, mm -hmm. um, particularly in the public corruption unit. The reason for that is we know because he said it on air all the time that mm -hmm. he would target and prosecute his political enemies. We also know that he would pardon people before they were even charged with anything if they were his friends. So it seems to me that common sense would have been for the Attorney General Merrick Garland to say, let me take a look at these cases. We have another friend, um, of course, the co-host of National uh, National Native Land Pod, Andrew Gillum, who was acquitted from federal charges, but was under the same. It was the same circumstances. These prosecutors who are career, but are very political. Again, Leo Wise, who donated to Maryland's political opponents. There's a clear conflict. Now, let me ask you a question. Ms. Yeah. Ryan. Now, you come up here all the time and you talk about the Biden administration and, and how yeah. you hate when Charlemagne sometimes uh, goes against them because, you know, you know how they should be helping our people. Right. And you go hard for the Biden do administration. I? You, you read in the comments. <laughs> well, you go against the other side, I should say. I absolutely you go, go against, against the other, the other side. side. I, will, I will always applaud them if they're doing something right, to Correct. be fair. I'm not against them. So I'm now in the situation of what's right. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. clear what's right, what they should be doing. That's right. They don't do the right thing. How do you feel about the Biden administration now? I think that this is an administration that actually owes Maryland. And the reason for that is 
when um, Joe Biden was being called Crime Bill Joe or uh, so. Kamala Harris was being called the top cop. Mm hmm. Maryland went out and said, let me make sure y'all understand that I modeled my prosecutorial office after Kamala. Not Biden. Though. She went at, she he wasn't a prosecutor. I'm just saying. Lenard, <laughs> this is so, like, I'm just it's so unnecessary. I understand. You, you, you use him as a reference. I'm just saying how people think. Like Anyway, the point the is, during the campaign, she stumped for them. When Kamala had a um, a bill on how they were going to review recreational marijuana, Maryland was testifying before the United States Senate because she was a forefront leader here. I'm not saying that this is a political quid pro quo. I'm saying you owe it to justice to do the right thing. Right. You owe it to Maryland to protect her and insulate her, not just for Maryland, but for every mm -hmm. prosecutor who followed suit after Kamala, Madam Vice President, after Kim Fox. Rachel Rock, like all of these black women prosecutors are now under attack. That is not by an accident. That is by design. They are trying to ensure that other folks do not come forward and pursue progressive justice in the ways that they have. These are the things that create DEI, equitable mm -hmm. opportunities for our folks. If we don't do it this way, we end up overly incarcerated and underemployed, under like not having the opportunities we deserve. Has I, don't, I don't forgot? disagree. I don't disagree. Has Biden with, forgot? Does he not remember all these things? Or, or my are we not reaching out to him? Or? No, you know we're reaching out to him. Okay. So we have a um, a petition out um, on the Color Change platform. You can also go to justiceformarylandmosby dot com, and there you will find this petition. It is to President Biden. There are letters that are going out. There's a civil rights organization letter that just went out yesterday. That is important for people to understand. This isn't just some random people like coming together mm -hmm. for Maryland. All of the community is saying, no, 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 this is the right thing to do. Ben Crump has been a very vocal advocate. And you know he's um, very supportive of the Biden-Harris administration. I think what we have to understand is it may not be on his radar. He, he does have a genocide that he's you know, watching and, oh, and, no, no, no. and having to an engage excuse. it. He, he's no, 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 no. He I'm, got saying, a I'm saying, I agree with that. Yeah. And some of the pushback has been that Maryland didn't fill out a pardon application. We were initially advised. And so we're going to fill out the application, but also it is on his radar now. All right. We have more with Marilyn Mosby, state attorney for Baltimore. Uh, she was state attorney from 2015 to 2023. We'll be back with us. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Marilyn Mosby. Now, I got a question. Do the people support you? Do the people in Baltimore support you? Or they they have an understanding? The reason I ask is when people sometimes see state attorney, mm -hmm. they automatically think mm -hmm. she prosecutes so many people, so let her handle herself, right? And, and the problem with that is you have so many people that that will feel like state attorneys do the, a lot of times do the same thing that they're doing to you, right? Mm -hmm. So for people out there that feel like they've been through it, and they haven't had the voice that you've had. What do you say to those people to make sure that they understand that you weren't that type of attorney? I don't know if you were or you weren't. So I think the people of Baltimore recognize that I, wa I was not that typical sort of case processing attorney that was thinking about only convictions. The mantra of my office was justice over convictions. And that was mm -hmm. something that I took to heart. You know, I went to over 3000 community association churches and schools throughout my tenure. I had the first crime control and prevention division out of a state attorney's office where we touch more than 20,000 young people throughout my tenure. There were so many things. I had community uh, liaisons and representatives in the community. There were so many things that I understood and recognized that you have to be able to break down those barriers of distrust, right? Um, we, we touched 52,000 victims and witnesses of crime. We renovated the victim witness room. There were so many things that we did. And I think that um, fundamentally, the people of Baltimore understood that I was a different type of prosecutor. It was justice over convictions. But when you have um, conservative media, right, and biased media that villainize you day in and day out, 24 hours a day, the only thing that they're focusing on is you and they're comparing you, oh, this is just a yet another corrupt Baltimore politician or better yet, just another black Baltimore city criminal, right? They they put that into the minds of individuals and they yeah. did this for years upon years. And I couldn't say anything about it because there was a gag order. Right. And I couldn't even defend myself. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, the people of Baltimore, a, a number of them have been hoodwinked. Right. right? Malcolm X said it like yep. you, mm -hmm. you don't pay attention. The media will have you hating your uh, the the mm -hmm. the the oppressed. Yeah. And, and loving the oppressor. That's right. And so. 
I, at the end of the day, the the one thing I can say, and yes, this has been extremely isolating and 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 painful because I did sacrifice so much of myself to do what was right. But I feel grateful because God, even the conditions on top of the federal government coming for me, right? Like I've had to go through heartbreak and betrayal. I've, I've lost everything from my reputation, my election, my career, my my marriage. I was it was in a 25 year relationship. I had to walk away from, right? Like um, my car. My grandmother is in, in hospice right now. She she raised me. There was so many other sort of elements of like, what is this, God? Right. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm grateful because he brought and, and, and the people that I loved unconditionally showed me the conditions of their love. Mm. And at the, my lowest, at my lowest, it was me and God. Mm. It was me and God. I was walking out. The most sobering moment for me was in the courtroom when I turned around that first trial and I wanted to shield my girls so I didn't bring them. They see enough. My kids have been confronted in school and they're like, kids are, are cruel that's why your mother's going to jail right and it's it's affected them so the first trial i was like okay uh, i'm gonna get through this and the most sobering moment when is when i turned around and there was nobody in the courtroom and i i prayed on it and i said god what is this and i came out media is asking me what, 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 what are you how you feel how you feel i feel blessed i feel blessed and what i realized is that god was with me my angel guides were with me my ancestors are with me I, I didn't need anybody. But that second trial, let me tell you, he sent perfect strangers into my life. My mother and father didn't even show up to trial. That was so sobering for me. But he sent perfect strangers in my life that advocated for me that I refer to as my earth angels that have taken on this cause. You know, Angela has been phenomenal using her platform, you know, and, and trying to just figure out how I'm gonna live. Like yeah. when you deplete your, your savings and I still have a mortgage and now I have rent because I don't have the house that I was living in. And like, I brought my girls because I wanted them to see what it feels like to have faith, right? And and to, to see strength in the face of adversity. What do you say to people? What about the perjury charge? The perjury is related to me withdrawing the funds from the COVID provision. Mm -hmm. There's from no base retirement from account. my retirement account. Like they, they have not prosecuted or used this provision for anyone else. As Angela has already indicated, I didn't even realize 35,000 35, people, people in America have, have done the same thing mm -hmm. under this provision. The, the person in Baltimore City, I told you 739 people did that in the city of Baltimore. I am the only person in America, in America, that has been wow. investigated, prosecuted, and now convicted. The thing to know about this too is the perjury is about saying she experienced an adverse financial consequence. Right. That is Maryland's to know. And the problem is this judge, again, this is not Maryland talking, this is me. She told the jury to rely on their own common sense. It is in the court transcripts. That's not a jury instruction. She told the jury that it is defined in the CARES Act. An adverse financial consequence is defined in the CARES Act. It is not. It's defined as an adverse financial consequence. And as someone who has written legislation on the Hill, we ain't got time to define everything. <laughs> so you got to give them what the parameters are for that in the jury instructions. That is your obligation as the judge. The worst thing I think about this is... For Maryland to have experienced an adverse financial consequence doesn't mean that her salary took a hit, mm -hmm. which is what DOJ was trying to tie. Like, well, you're her still drawing salary the same didn't salary. Change. Yeah. Right. But that's not the case. It could be that she had to start taking care of another family member who experienced hardship, who was laid off, who was furloughed. And we all had those family members who were, we all were like, what is going to happen? We It was a very scary time. Mind you, all the members of Congress who were withdrawing their same salaries but could get PPP loans, they weren't prosecuted. Mm -hmm. And we're not even talking about PPP. Governor Hogan, this brings me back to my point from five minutes ago. Governor Hogan gave the feds money to prosecute fraud related to the CARES Act. You want to know when he did it? Shortly after Maryland was indicted. Mm. That was by design so that they could ensure that they did whatever they needed to to lock her up. They literally targeted that money to CARES Act related fraud. So if you receive a, par a pardon, Maryland, what do you do moving forward? I mean, I'm able to live my life again. I'm able to continue to fight for justice. I mean, this is you not... You go back into politics? I don't know if I... I, I let me tell you right now, I'm, I'm a little jaded in, in right. right now at this mm -hmm. moment, but I'm not going to stop fighting for, for, for justice mm -hmm. and fighting for what's right in this country. I think, um, you know, that for me, it's a calling. Um, so 
I, I just want to be able to to live again. I want to be able to to be with my babies and well, they're not babies, my teenagers, um, and and establish my life again. Like I, I deserve to live. I, I think I've I've sacrificed a lot um, to ensure that the skills of justice are, are are fair. So what's the call to action? What do what do, you, what, do you, what do we need people to do? We need people to sign this petition. Where is it? Um, the, it's on uh, justiceformarylandmosby.com. Mm -hmm. um, the petition is calling on President Biden to issue a pardon to do the right thing because sometimes even good people need to be called to account and to be asked to do the right thing. Um, so, so we'll so keep we'll, doing it. You can debate if he's good or not. But go ahead. Well, not, not today. Yeah. Not on this. Not in the call to action. <laughs> Um, and I think the other thing that's important for people to do is to spread the word. Mm -hmm. Talk about this case. If you know that this is ridiculous, that someone is facing 40 years in prison, one for something they didn't do, but especially something ar around withdrawing money from their own retirement account, speak up because if we don't, it can happen to any of us. That is the point. So I think those are the two calls to action for those who are listening. What's, the, what's the website again? Justice for Marilyn Mosby .com. Sign that pardon petition and also make sure that you're sharing this story. Sign the petition. That's right. It's Marilyn Mosby. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, just hilarious. Envy around here somewhere. Uh, thank you, Marilyn Mosby and Angela Rye for joining us. Dropping yeah. the clues bombs for Marilyn Mosby. Okay? Always remember an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Now, it's time for Just with the Mess. The news is real. Weather is hilarious. Jessica Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide Mess. On The Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. Oh, my God. So, Khloe Kardashian and Mr. Testin Tristan Thompson several times. Uh, so, she sat down and did a podcast um, with Dr. A and Mary Alice Haney. And she talked about her son, Tatum. And he was born through surrogacy, for those who didn't know. And she spoke on how much that he looked like, how much he looked like her father and her brother and what uh, what it led her to do. DNA tests for Tatum. He was so offended. And I'm like, but this, he doesn't this look like me, my brother by accident. I would, that would, in this family, that would not surprise me, but I would be, that would be so disgusting. But I just was like, I need, I remember she was like, you've already done a DNA test. So I need to do another one. I need to figure it out. So she had Tristan do three paternity tests because she said uh, her son Tatum didn't look like her or him. Well, he don't look like you now, dummy. Like, what are you talking about? Of course. And she thought that her brother may have, like, donated sperm. He looks like you and your brother. You didn't look like that before all your life. You looked like your brother. At one point, everybody thought y'all was twins. Oh, so you so, mean, like, the baby looks like her pre-surgery? Pre absolutely, yeah. yeah. That, so yes. you think she forgot what she looked like? No, I oh, don't think that like? she forgot. I no, she is no way you can forget. So they they must have not had a, a, an exclusive relationship where she was dating other men and having sex with other men. If she had to take it's a, a DNA surrogate. test, yeah, it was. It's a, it's a, a it was that a baby was a surrogate. It was, oh, it was a surrogate. Yeah, she didn't have vaginal. Yeah, that oh. that was a surrogate baby. But it was like, no, you don't. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. So with a surrogate, that's right. Because you, you just walked in here. But go ahead. That's all right. <laughs> mm -hmm. with, with a <laughs> with a surrogate, she knows they picked the sperm exactly, and it's Tristan. Yeah. So, so, okay. Yep, it's Tristan's baby, and of course they had a surrogate, you know. But she is just so distracted by the fact that he doesn't look like either one of them, her or Tristan. Her now okay. and is Tristan. the baby tall? Is the baby on projected to be you know a first Seven round draft pick in twenty forty seven? I'm not sure. Huh? But the baby is beautiful, beautiful little boy. He just looked like what she used to look like, and her brother and their father. Which brother, Rob? Yes, Rob. Bro, bro. They only brother. got one brother. They only got oh, one brother. I, don't, I can't tell. They only had one father at one point. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, y'all. But no, they only got one brother, y'all. It's <laughs> only one. <laughs> but her real father. Her, her real, real father. father her yeah. real father. Okay. Uh, um, ro uh, Rob the Kardashian Senior or somebody like that. All right, yeah. So anyway, moving on. Mm -hmm. Brian McKnight's son slams Tyrese for his input. Now, the story starts with Brian McKnight calling his children products of sin a little while back. Mm -hmm. He received some backlash for it, and it was even speculation um, that the cancellation of one of his one of his recent shows 
came from the lack of support. Um, well, came from like his father, his statements about his kids. Ricky Smiley was one of the people who stepped up to share his thoughts and support for Brian McKnight's kids. And that's I just want to say to Brian McKnight, kids, to all of his kids, the ones that he said that's born and eat, born out of evil, or born in evil, whatever he said, uh, or whatever, <laughs> let you know that you have a lot of support out here. Uh, we here at the Ricky Smiley Morning Show support you. If anybody get this message out to the Brian McKnight, uh, two sons and daughter. You are always welcome to the state of Alabama, to the great state of Alabama, where there, where you have men and you have uncles and you have a lot of people take on kids that have been abandoned by fathers. I've seen a lot of it. I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so Brian McKnight a minute ago had called his children products of a sin, of sin, mm -hmm. um, and he didn't do anything for them, didn't raise them, anything like that. Um, but and he only claims, I think, his new kids, his new kids with mm -hmm. his wife, um, and then it, those kids are grown. The one mm -hmm. he don't, the ones that he don't claim. So Ricky Smiley has stepped up in support of those children. Oh yeah, I I, I know, but why is Ricky Smiley going so hard? Like why? I, I'm not sure. Well, you know, he he lost a son, okay. and he he actually is a very very sweet, good hearted person. Like. Mm -hmm. He'll give you the shirt off his back. He invites you to stay at his house. He has he has a lot of a lot of homes, a lot of property or whatever. You know mm -hmm. to get back on your feet or whatever. But I, I just love the support. But Tyrese, he wasn't really feeling that, mm -hmm. and um, he jumped online to say this following Ricky Smiley's uh, what audio. What I want to address is I want to talk to my brother Ricky Smiley, and I want to say to you that it is unfair in my grown man opinion to say that that man and the mother of his kids, which are now grown adults past 30 years old, whatever their specific dynamic is, there's a bunch of things that has been said and done over the years that is nobody's business that has contributed to where they are. 2024 uh, is so wild. It's so wild and crazy. Ricky um, Smiley beefing with Brian McKnight with side commentary from Tyrese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, hey, they are not beefing. Shut up. Um, <laughs> it's going to go down at Essence Fest this year. They're going to need, they need extra security. But oh, no, my goodness. Nicholas McKnight, the son popped out. He had to check Tyrese real quick. He said, Tyrese used to sleep under our pool table when I was a kid. <laughs> like, y'all can't find no futon for this boy? Anyway, I know he said, I know the 90s R&B brotherhood blood is thicker than anything, but you should sit this one out, champ. You have relationships to fix your own with your own children mm. and your own past decisions you've made on the behalf of coochie and power the allegiance to two the allegiance to those two things is what keeps you guys from seeing that the only thing that matters in the end is family real men can see past bs let me stop though this 46 hour chemo infusion has me ready to fade jody and that's not right so we want us us to know obviously he has cancer, cancer but right. he still will slap you right so and, and listen he's not wrong Tyrese called that on himself right that young man would have had nothing to say to Tyrese if right. Tyrese didn't interject himself into this situation yeah. now we know Tyrese used to sleep under Brian and that's poor <laughs> right. table right. which sounds crazy yeah <laughs> like oh you think cause you, he used to let you sleep under the pool table the pool table that he's a good father <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? He didn't even give you a pillow. Why was Tyrese sleeping under his pillow? <laughs> That's Jesus. the better question. Why, <laughs> no, the better question is why everybody in Brian McKnight's life. Like, why don't they mind their business? This is family business, and we don't mm. know what happens. We're only hearing what they want us to hear. We're only hearing one side. Why don't mm. everybody just mind their business? Now, I will say. That's what Tyrese was saying, though. Yes, I want everybody to mind Meeting their him business. Too. I got you. But it's cool when people don't mind their business and we get information like Tyrese used to sleep under Brian McKnight's pool <laughs> yeah, table. Yeah, I like that. That's, 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 that's funny. Because it's like, that's, that's all right, now. The visual is crazy. That's like, why. That's all you care about. I ain't never heard of nobody sleeping under a pool table. Under a pool but table. The fact that it's Jody? <laughs> just, guys, just imagine he bought up under there, both his hands on his head. You that's know? right. Mm. You should have listened to your mama, Jody. If you'd have listened to your mama, okay, mm -hmm. in baby boy, she wouldn't have kicked you out the house. And you wouldn't have had to go sleep under the pool table. If that didn't want you staying there, you ended up under Brian McKnight's pool table. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. One last cry. All right, y'all. So that's just with the mess for the second hour. Thank yes. you, Jess. Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? Man, I need uh, everybody who had a problem with uh, Rudy Gobert missing game two of the NBA playoffs to come to the front of the congregation. Gilbert Arenas, Draymond Green. I'd like to discuss something with all you brothers. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne, say the game. Don't get other Charlamagne. You are a donkey. Ah! It's time for Donkey of the Day. Donkey of the Day does not discriminate. I might not have the song of the day, but I got the donkey of the day. So if you ever feel I need to be a donkey, man, you can get to be a donkey. Yes! 
the Breakfast Club, bitches. Who's Donkey of the Day today? Let me tell you why I love Just Hilarious, and that's why that's my sister. Because I was going to say something. I was just going to wait till the mics came on. Mm -hmm. Now, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight people in this room. It was, it's, it was smelled so bad in this room. It did. Several Crazy. seconds ago. Crazy. I was just waiting to say something. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Jess said, now, whoever wanted to fart in this room, you know, like, you should have said it. Know. You should have yeah, said it before you let one loose. Here's the thing. I don't know if that was a fart. Oh. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know who it is. There's still six people oh, in here. Whatever it and is. There's something still lingering. Well, I'm my just baby, saying. Uh, my baby wasn't even moving. <laughs> and my baby was like, <laughs> um, hello. That's all I'm saying. Moving God damn it. Light another candle. Uh, donkey today. <laughs> For Wednesday, May 8th, goes to everyone who is upset with Minnesota Timberwolves player Rudy Gobert, okay? Uh, from Draymond Green to Gilbert Arenas. Uh, by the way, two of my favorite personalities by far. I like listening to these brothers talk basketball, so let's be clear. They know way more about this uh, basketball subject than me. But since when in this era do you have to have knowledge to speak on something? Now, Rudy Gobert, who was named Defensive Player of the Year for a fourth time yesterday, missed Game 2 of the NBA playoffs versus the Denver Nuggets because of what I believe is a really legitimate reason. Reason, the birth of his very first child. A uh, round of applause for Rudy Gobert and his, his uh, the mother of his child. Mm -hmm. I don't know many men who would want to miss the birth of their very first child under any circumstances. Those kids are going to be in your life long after basketball is over. The birth of a child is not one of those things you get to witness again. I can remember every single one of my babies when they came into this world, especially the first one, okay? My first daughter came out the womb with prayer hands. I promise you, she came out holding her hands together like she was praying. And that is a memory I will never forget. One of the greatest moments, memories of my life. So as a man, I completely respect and appreciate Rudy putting his family in the birth of his child over basketball. Gilbert Arenas thinks otherwise. Can we listen to what Gilbert Arenas had to say on the Gilbert Arenas show? So we got an interesting wrinkle uh, for game two. Uh, Rudy Gobert is questionable for the game due to personal reason that's becoming a father for the first time. Uh, I mean, miss this game for that baby. I see you. It's a baby, bro. It's going to be there when you get back. We <laughs> hope. <laughs> I mean, God, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just saying, whatever you about to think you about to do with the baby, he gonna be asleep. Like, I get, I get you want to be with your wife and smile and stuff and your good uh, NBA uh, health care insurance. Right. It's because of you playing. So first child, not as important as game two of, of second round playoff. Man, listen, bro. bro she, she in the hospital with great doctors. You <laughs> taking your goofy ass down? He's man. on the baby, right? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right. You IG daddy. Just do hey, hey. Whatever. Just off the phone. I'll see you after the game. Now, I find Gilbert Arenas hilarious. And most of the time, I agree with things he says. But now is not one of those times. I think we take Gilbert serious when he's just clearly joking. But I don't think he's joking right here. But I'm also not an NBA player. I don't have that NBA mindset. <laughs> Draymond Green had similar thoughts on the Draymond Green show. Let's listen. I was a little skeptical in starting the game off, number one, uh, because Rudy was going to miss the game. And I just felt like I'm a father of four. I love my kids. Um, and I love my wife. But she's going to have to hold off for me just a few more hours uh, <laughs> for, for, the, for a playoff game. Like, I, I just, me personally, I, um, number one, congratulations to him anytime. Uh, we, you know, we have, we bring new life into this world. It's a special thing. And that's something, as I said, as a father of four, that I don't take for granted at all. But I also don't try not to take this game for granted. Is that how this works, Jess? You could just hold off on having the baby till the game a is over? Absolutely not. Uh -huh. You will come home to not me or the baby if you <laughs> want to run up and down the court and put a ball in the hoop. Mm. Well, I don't care playoffs or no playoffs. Mm. Once again, mm. ball players talking ball. We civilians, it's a different mindset they have. Now, I don't know if Draymond Green truly believes this or he just doesn't like Rudy Gobert. We know Draymond isn't a fan of Rudy Gobert because we watched him put Draymond in the million-dollar dream. I mean, we watched him put Rudy in the million-dollar dream in the middle of a game for no reason, okay? <laughs> Tried to decapitate him in the middle of a basketball game just because. So you have to take what Draymond says with a grain of salt as well. And I do take into consideration, once again, that they are professional basketball players. A lot of times, we on the sidelines contributing to these convos, we don't have the mindset that they have, okay? We know nothing uh, about what they think as a basketball player but as a human just a man I don't have any problem with Rudy Gobert missing the uh, second round game two in the NBA playoffs to see the birth of his first child uh, what? I mean Jesus and we as black men gotta be careful about this type of stuff because they are they are always ready to reinforce this false narrative that we not there for our children which we know is a damn lie okay Gilbert said the child will, will be there when he gets back hopefully uh, <laughs> hopefully so with his series though 
We already up 1-0 in the series. The worst case scenario is we is we lose and it's tied. Best case scenario is we win without without him, which they did. So Rudy made the right choice. Now, what makes this even more strange is Gilbert and Draymond gave this criticism after game two was over and the Timberwolves won. If they would have lost, you would have had every right to say, you know, that's why you should have been on the court. I, I would have still disagreed with you, but it's a better debate when the Wolves lose. When the Wolves win, y'all just look like dudes who care about basketball more than you care about your kids. And I know that's not the case, but guys, y'all know we live in an era where folks think their perception is their reality. Why even give folks the opportunity to run with those kinds of narratives, okay? I saw people reaching in regards to Gilbert trying to say, we're not taking parenting advice from a guy who once did this and a guy who once did that. Trust me, nothing they were bringing up that I saw had anything to do with this situation, okay? Bringing guns in the locker room has nothing to do with his opinion on Rudy Gobert missing a playoff game. <laughs> now, Shannon Sharp and Ocho Cinco weighed in as well. Let's listen. It all depends. If it's a playoff game, we can have another baby. Right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to the playoff. That, if it's right. a Super Bowl, I'm damn sure ain't missing that. In Rudy's <laughs> case, the baby was born, and I'm assuming, I'm hoping, hey, yeah. that mother and child was okay. I'm out of there. Once I find I'm out gone. mother and child is okay, I think it's Different his first mindset. child, so he... Hey, let him get to number two. He <laughs> might FaceTime. He might Zoom the whole thing. But Ocho, that's right. something With her. that you need to have right. discussed beforehand. So therefore, right. when it happens, nobody's right, surprised. Right. I, you know, I'm playing. I ain't, I ain't missing no game. Hey, right. get it in July. So guess what? The off season, the baby come out in the off season. Y'all got to play a little I'm better. Like I'm going to be there for the birth. Once you yeah. okay, I'm gone. Yeah. Well, that, well, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll be there for the birth. Sense. Yeah. But once you have birth... I'm gone. I, agree. I get that. I, I do think uh, we have to go to Breakfast Club Court, though, before I give this hee-haw, because I'm a civilian. And a lot of these professional athletes do have me questioning myself just a little bit. I never played professional sports, so maybe my take is just a little bit off. So let's open up the phone lines. All right. Mm. Let's do it. Let's 800 Breakfast Club Court. 585 1051. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Rudy Gobert, he missed game two of the playoffs because he wanted to be there when his baby was born. He wanted to be there with his lady. And these are high level athletes, these right? Are high this level is, this athletes. is Gilbert Arenas. This is Draymond Green. This is, even though it's not basketball, it's Shannon Sharp. Mm -hmm. These are high level athletes saying they would have missed the game as well. Let's talk I about it. I agree with Shannon a little bit more than all of them, though, because he said, I would have watched the birth. And then went. I and mean, get out of Dodge, right? That's this right. is first baby, too. First baby. First baby. 800-585-1051. You know how tough the playoffs are, right? Now, the Minnesota Timberwolves, quote-unquote, were supposed to lose, right? Because everybody was favoring Denver to win they're this a, series. They're a, they're a former champion. That's right. So the fact Repeat that champions. he was needed game two, because mm -hmm. they really need all their pieces. And they know how hard it is to win a playoff, but to win won. a series, to win a conference finals, to win the chip. My Knicks haven't done it in years. By the way, football mm. is a little bit more, would probably confuse you a little bit more because they won and done. Right. NBA series, I'm missing the game. So let's talk about it. 800 585 What are your thoughts? Jess Larry said if her man went to the game, mm. she's gone. That's right. Hello. Gia would make me go to the game. Gia would be like, go to the game. We're going to watch the game. I wouldn't, but she would be like, go to the game. We're going to watch the game. I wouldn't. I would be kind of like what Shay Shay said. I'm going to wait till the baby comes out. Baby, you okay? Gone. Gone. Yeah, yeah. That's what I be. Well, let's open up the phone line. 800-585-1051. Well, let's and discuss. And let the record show. It still smells like collard greens in this room. It smells like collard greens. <laughs> we had collard greens right last now. night. It ain't smell like no damn collard greens uh, a minute ago. Mm. It, was, it was big eggs. <laughs> big so. eggs. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody is DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now we're in Breakfast Club Court. Why, Charlemagne? Because uh, I was attempting to administer a donkey of the day, and uh, you know, there was, it was a, a lot of people involved. I mean, you had uh, Draymond Green, you had Gilbert Arenas, uh, just everybody who was upset that uh, Rudy Gobert decided to play. Decided, decided not to play in game two of uh, the NBA playoff series against the Denver Nuggets. They both said that you know he should have skipped the birth of his baby to be there on the court for his team. And uh, when I hear Gilbert Arenas and I hear Draymond Green, you know, people on social media, they don't really count. But when I hear Gilbert Arenas, Draymond Green, and then you hear Shannon Sharp and Ojo Cinco, you have to say to yourself, we're just civilians, right? right? We're on the sidelines. We're not high-level athletes like them. Their mindset is different. So I just want to make sure I'm not missing something before I administer this hee-haw. So that's why I wanted to go to Breakfast Club Court. Because personally, as a man, I don't find anything wrong with what Rudy Gobert did. I'm no. happy that he decided to choose 
his family and the birth of his first child mm. over basketball. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it is difficult to get into the playoffs, especially the second round of the playoffs in, in NBA basketball. And Rudy Gobert is not a scrub. He's a main player. But I'm with you. I'm not missing the birth of, of any of my children. Now, I would have waited for the child to come out. And, and if everybody was healthy and okay, he's a, he's Rudy Gobert. He makes, what, $20, $30 million a year? Something I, like that. I would have got on a private jet and made it to the game. That's what Shannon Sharp said. Shannon, Shannon Sharp said I would have watched the birth. And then, and then after that, I'm out. Yeah. I understand that. Mm-hmm. Even as a whether you're a civilian or a NBA basketball player, you know what I'm saying. I feel like, are you not a dad first? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, is that? I don't know. I like you said, the mindset thing. Okay, could be different because of who's in the league and everything like that. But are you just not a dad first? Like oh. that's the moment you can't get back. Mm-hmm. Not that. Oh, the baby walked for the first time. Oh, not that. First birthday party. Yeah. Oh, like, but birth. But let me ask you a question, Jess. What's that? Tables were turned, right? Mm-hmm. But then let's say it was Super Bowl. Your baby daddy or your husband, mm-hmm. you're about to have your baby, but it's Super Bowl. It's one game, one and done, and he's one of the stars of the team. Please go. You're going to say go. Please if it's go. Super Bowl, you're going to let him go. That's what okay. I'm saying. The football, right. football yeah, is different. Yeah. It's one and done. I can football, football is different. It's These playoff games, it's seven games, right? Seven games mm-hmm. in basketball. You can miss one game. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's game mm-hmm. seven. It's game two. Yeah. But you know what I was thinking, too, and it just came to me. like what? These football players, these basketball players, their whole life is about sacrifice. Correct. Mm-hmm. They have to make so many different sacrifices. So that's what I say when our mindset, we can't even fathom what they be thinking about because they've sacrificed so much as humans yep. for basketball. So they're yeah. damn near willing to sacrifice anything mm. for that for the love of that ball. And I get it. Pause. Pause. I get it. Yeah. Well, let's go to the phone lines. We got Sean on the line. Sean, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's your thoughts, Sean? Uh, I think that Shane Sharp hit, uh, hit the hit the nail on a hit the nail perfectly. Um, I'm a I come from a teaching background. You know, we try they they say you should try to have your kids in the off season, like that that June and July. Yeah. Like in the NBA, you're supposed to you're supposed to have these conversations before you know mm-hmm. you you have your kid with your wife, like. I believe Rudy has a kid already, so I no, think no, Rudy already has a first child. First, 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 first kid. No, no, not. I, I'm gonna say I believe he has championship already. So I, I don't think that he's gonna. Miss, I don't think he's missing. Nah, like, Ru- I don't think Rudy got one the Jazz. Got, nah, Rudy never won a ring. No, he's with oh, the Jazz no. for like 10, 11 years. I don't think he got one. Yeah, he still needs to have that conversation with his with, with his wife. Um, at the end of the day. Unless you had that conversation with your team, and you already know you had, sometimes you have that confidence in, in, in what your personnel is. If you know that your team is going to straighten them up, then they probably had that conversation. Yo, we probably don't need you. That's right. We got the next man up for you. Right? I got you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go to another call. If we go to line four, who's this? Nev. What up, Nev? What's up, boys? How you doing, man? I'm good. What's your thoughts? Listen, this is a, this is this man's first child. Do not to supersede family. Mm-hmm. This man, there's no, there's no redos. I mean, he cannot miss the, the, the birth of his first child. There's no game two for the birth of your first child. That that takes priority over everything. If they're gonna be mad, meet me in the parking lot. It is what it is. Okay, <laughs> so you think that they should get the donkey today? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. All right, boss. Jasmine, good morning. Good morning, y'all. Uh, what do you? Good what's morning. your thoughts, Jazz? Um, I think that they all deserve the donkey today, and I say that because. Childbirth is a very dangerous experience, and whether the child is there or not, you need your partner there to advocate for you. A lot of things can go left in the blink of an eye, and doctors and nurses will write it off as normal, but it's not. Your partner needs to be there to look you in the face and say, nah, this is not good, it's not okay, and a lot of things can change. So it was very insensitive for them to say those comments. Um, Just because the baby is there doesn't mean that she's out of the clear. So all of them deserve to get it. And this is why women right. are important, because that is very true. That is something I didn't even think about. Like, you know, I don't know what the race of Rudy Gobert's child's mother is, but we do know that the maternal death rate, especially with black people, is v- black women is very, very high. Yeah. Yep. So, yes, imagine if you decided to choose a game over being there for the birth of your child, yeah. and God forbid something happens to 
the mother of your child. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. you would never forgive yourself for that. No, yeah. you're right. No, you're absolutely right. I know when 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 I had my first child, which was was Madison, of course, Gia had a fever of like 104, 105. Mm-hmm. And that's because it was an infection. I, they believe the doctor might have left something inside. Yeah. Uh, and she had a fever. And I was there. And I could imagine if I wasn't there. Let's say I was out playing the game yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah. there was nobody there and they had to, you know, they had to, you know, she had to lay in a, a ice cold bed and all that other stuff but like you said yeah things happen and you want to be there when those things happen yeah it don't matter if you got a doula yep no mm-hmm. matter how good the doctors are yep you want to be there if something go wrong with your the mother of your child alright well let's take some more phone calls when we come back 800-585-1051 what is the question Charlemagne? oh I was just deciding whether or not I should actually give them donkey of the day because they did make me second guess myself because I'm listening to all these athletes mm-hmm. this is Draymond Green we talk about Gilbert Arenas Shannon Sharp Otis Single he's athletes Athletes are saying they wouldn't have missed the game. You know, that's not exactly what Shannon said. Shannon said he would have been there and then left. Right. But they're saying they would have missed the game, so it just made me second guess myself. So I just want to make sure before I give them the hee haw. Okay. All right. We'll take some more calls when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilaria, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, Charlemagne uh, tried to give Donkey today, was a little confused this morning. Yeah, I was all hell bent on giving Donkey of the Day to everybody who has a problem with Rudy Gobert missing game two of uh, the NBA playoff series versus the Denver Nuggets. So, you know, Draymond Green said something. Gilbert Arena said something. Shannon Sharp and Ocho Cinco were talking about it, even though Shannon had the best take to me. Shannon said that he would have been there, but as soon as the baby comes, he'd have been out. But, yeah, just hearing all of those high-level athletes say they wouldn't have missed the game made me be like, well, damn, let me make sure. So we decided to take it to breakfast club court. Now, let I me cannot I- believe that he's second-guessing himself because them four gentlemen mm-hmm. had their own takes. Now, let me ask you a question. It was game two. <laughs> what, what if it was game seven? Game seven is a little different. But yeah. it's still not, though. You it's- still should put family over basketball. Yeah. But once again, like I said last break, these guys are so... Their mindset is sacrifice. Right. That's all they know. They get to the level they've gotten at as professional athletes. They've had to sacrifice so much. Remember LeBron was on his podcast with J.J. Redick, and he was like, yo, in order to be super successful like we are, you got to sacrifice everything. Yeah. Yes. So they are, they're willing to do that. But also... Yeah. I think your sacrifice is stronger when you first get in the league. Mm-hmm. Rudy's been in the league 10, 11 years, 10 12 years, years right? Mm-hmm. 10 years. Mm-hmm. So your sacrifice is not the same as much. You realize, you start to realize what's more important. Yeah. And I think for Rudy, he's understanding that family's more important. Yeah. You and know what I mean? his first baby. Yeah. So. Which is a feat of fun in itself. Yeah. All that money you've been making for 10 years and you just getting caught? Yo, shut up. Shannon. Oh, my God. Yo, this champ. Champ, what up, champ? Yo, what's up? What's going on, champ? What's your thoughts? Shannon Sharp had a good point, man. I'm going to be there for the birth, but then I'm leaving for the game at the playoffs. Gilbert Arena is here real goofy. Everything he go popular for is on some goofy Definitely shit. Definitely goofy. Okay. I agree. Yeah, you know, he going to say this, and then last time he was making jokes about the, um, the rapper dude. You know, like everything he say be on some other shit, so he still ain't pay attention to him. But Shannon Sharp, right, man. Beat up for the birth and leave. Okay. I was arguing with my first one when she came, and... I really told her I was going to knock her out if she wasn't in the hospital. I went home, smoked a joint, came back in time for the birth. Hold on, you said you told your baby mama you was going to knock her out? If, if she, she wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she wasn't man. What? So, yeah, I had to tell her that, man. She said she wished my mama was dead, so I wasn't born. So I was like, damn, you wasn't in the hospital. I'll knock you out. What? You know, I went home, smoked a joint, had a drink, came back, made it for the birth of my first daughter. I hope y'all not together anymore. They probably are. Nah, we not. We not together, and I got full custody, so everything worked out fine. Jeez. Why did she tell you that, though? Why did she say to you? <laughs> <laughs> she got mental issues. She was dealing. She's still dealing with. Them. Mm, gotcha. you know, okay. That sounds toxic. The, 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 Very much. Your, boy, your baby's about to be born. I would knock your dumb ass out if you wasn't mm. pregnant in birth right now. I wish, I wish well, you missed you the first part. The first part was the She's baby. Like, what did she say to you? She told me uh, she wished my mama wasn't born, so I would. I mean, she wished my mama was dead, so I would have never been born. Damn. Mm. God damn. Mm. And then you would yeah, have had we the was baby. Real I mean. toxic. We was real toxic. I had to get up out of there. Mm. Well, I'm glad you did, but I, I respect your opinion Thank on the you. topic. Jesus. Hello, mm. who's this? Good morning. It's Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Morning, What's your thoughts, girl. Leslie? So I think that he did the right thing. As a mom who's had intense birth, and you know you want to be there for the first child. But if it's game seven, I'm going to need you to go to the game, baby. Like, bring <laughs> home the ring, get us to the next level. Mm-hmm. I need you to go to the game. But I think that he was right for the most part. Okay. So those guys should get donkey today. And by the way, I respect you, but I'm telling you, that one woman really got me thinking. Because of Thank the you. maternal death rate in this country, mm-hmm. especially amongst 
black women. I don't know if Rudy Gobert's mother of his child is black or not. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But just the maternal death rate would have me not missing the birth. It just would. I just couldn't. Because if something goes wrong, like I've met people who have lost their 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 their, their children's mothers, their mm -hmm. wives, you know, in the process. I know birth, people who that has gone through. So yeah, I couldn't imagine, you know, getting that news in the middle of a game. Yeah, she's not. Black. She's no. She's not black. No. Oh, okay. But there's yeah. still a maternal death rate. Caucasian. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, she's. The black one is just higher. I'm not sure oh, if yeah, she's, she's, she's Caucasian, Caucasian. white or is oh, okay. she other, but gotcha. I know she's not black. Dr. Umar would have wanted you to miss the game. <laughs> First of all. <laughs> I mean, Dr. Umar would have wanted you to miss so, the birth. So I mean, yes. go to the game. Yes, you yes, would have wanted him to play. Game. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so who are you giving the donkey to, man? What's the um, I got, I'm going to give him the hee-haw. I okay. think the hee-haw is warranted. Too. Yeah, okay. the hee-haw is warranted. Uh, everybody who's upset that Rudy missed uh, game two, Draymond Green, Gilbert Arenas, the hee-haw is warranted. So uh, give them the biggest hee-haw, right? Okay. All right, well, when we come back, we got Jess with the mess. Yes, we do. You know what? That was actually in my mess, but I'm so glad that Gilbert Arenas got donkey, so I'm going to leave him alone. Okay. Um, But can y'all believe that Netflix removed the booze that Kim K got at really? the Rose? Can y'all believe it? Yes, Kim K got power. Yeah, she got a little power. <laughs> she got a little power. <laughs> All right, well, that little power went a long way because we ain't allowed to see the booze more, but I got the other one when we come back. I'm going to replay the up the booze. Booze? Okay, yes. Boy. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Come on. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the Mias. News is real, brother. Jess Hilarious, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess, worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach and shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. All right, so real quick, real quick. We know Kim K got power or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But remember when she had did Tom Brady's roast and they mm -hmm. walked up and they booed her? Mm -hmm. We got the audio from when they actually booed her. Thank you so much, Kevin. Well, thank you. I know a lot of people make fun of your height. Hey. Yeah, that, that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> All right. It probably cut some of the booze for timing. So that, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. So um, that was on the live event, you know, because mm -hmm. that roasting was live. But now you can play it back. They fixed it. Um, this is the edited version. Thank you so much, Kevin. I know a lot of people make fun of your height, <laughs> but what people don't know is you're also pretty mean. Which Damn. Makes you Ain't nothing real, boy. Nothing. Nope. Not right out. <laughs> no, although I was, I was, I was kind of, I felt kind of bad for her when he booed her because it's like, all right, come on now. Like, for what? It's you on know? brand. Huh? It's on brand. It's not what you mean on brand. She's Just, like the anti hero. She's the villain in a lot of people's stories. Oh my God. All that yeah. work that she be doing and everything. Like, I be looking at they like what she her. really do. That a is lot of people so dislike crazy. Her. Why, why she I mean, I know what, a what, lot what, of What does the work she do got to do with anything? Plastic surgery ain't got nothing to do oh, with this. Oh my God. That is so messed up. Either way, I felt bad for her when she got booed. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, damn. Like, the booze, that, they could have left that on Netflix. Because she still did that joke. She ain't run from it. Everything was good. She waited for, she gave a right. look like, all right, y'all, chill out. So, Jess, you on Def Comedy Jam Netflix or some comedy special. Yeah. And a couple booze come. And then they say, well, Jess, we're going to edit it. Oh, please don't leave it out. Because, you know, internet never lies. It'll be mm -hmm. a video of the real thing <laughs> circulating. And then they'll be coming at me for getting it to take it out. But you know what? The, the thing is, a lot of people probably didn't see the live event. So, they're only okay. going to see it on Netflix. So, when they see it, yeah. it never happened. The internet has it, trust and believe. Right. And it, we just it played it. We just played it on the radio. So. That's right. Yes, yeah, so um, I just wanted to <laughs> wanted to touch on it. Anyway, uh, the cop the cops cleared Jim Jones. So over the weekend, uh, we didn't get to talk about this, but Jim Jones got into an altercation at the, at a Florida airport, mm -hmm. um, and the video started circulating of him tossing an old, older white man down escalator steps with the airport security stepping in shortly after. At the time, we didn't really have much context or whatever like about. Um, the fight mm -hmm. but apparently it started like on the plane mm -hmm. so when the when the flight had landed jim had got up and got his stuff out of was trying to get his stuff out of the bin um before the the plane stopped moving mm -hmm. now these are just two other passengers the first guy he got up and poked them in the chest like hey like you can't be doing it so jim was like yo chill and so the guy did apologize but then another guy started shouting from him shouting to him from the seat like you know you can't be up and all that like really really upset and so they started arguing and then when the the plane stopped they called uh authorities to come to the gate 
Jones just wanted to keep it moving. Like, all right, whatever, whatever. So he he want to make no report or nothing. So he's going to get his bags and stuff. And the guys th- followed him. And that's where we actually see um, how the fight how the fight happened. Mm-hmm. The guy even flinched at him. He ain't, he ain't jump again. So the guy flinched at him again or whatever. And what I'm sad about is that the 94-year-old white man um, who... Had to be hospitalized. He was 94. Yeah, one of the guys was 94. Yeah. I guess he was on the bottom of the escalator, right? Yeah, yeah. That's not the one that was bothering Jim, though. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jim had, uh, threw a guy down. I saw the, the video. Guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a guy at the end, at the bottom of the escalator yeah. steps. He was about to get off, and he got ran over by yeah. the guy. Yeah. Jim threw the other guy at him, basically. But not at him. It just hit him. Or whatever. The other guy hit him. So, um, Jim said amazing. he was okay. It's actually look, like bowling. Like yeah, a, a thick right. black like, object just yeah. knocking down all those white uh, white pins. Yeah. That's what it looked like. <laughs> That's what it looked like. The police uh, <laughs> determined that uh, Jim acted in self defense and he asked did. him, "Did he want to press charges?" And of course, Jim declined. But yeah, he did. We yeah. saw the video. He got yeah, jumped. Did. Yep, yep, yep. Now, w- would it have been stitching if Jim said, yes, I want to press charges on these two uh, white individuals that... No, that, that wouldn't uh, have been. Look great. Yeah, w- Probably not in the hood, but yes, it would look great. What? I would, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to wait to press charges. Who the hell worried about snitching at this big age? We grown and we businessmen. You get, a, you assault me at the airport. A lot of men like jump to me live at the by airport. that code. I'm about to lose my flight privileges because y'all jump me at the airport. And, and, and not only that, we, I mean, we would what, assume that yeah. these, these individuals were in first class with Jim, so they got a little bread. You just gonna put no, your hands on No, they probably me? wasn't in first class. I'm not assuming that at all. Yeah. Why am I assuming they was in first class? I'm assuming Jim was in first class. Because if they could poke him, but you're not at the plane, right. you know, probably in first no, class. They with probably him. ran. They probably ran to the front of the plane. Well, the reason I said that is because if they got enough money to, to poke me in the end first class, now you hit me, I'm hurt, I'm injured, you got caught some. And why you touching my chest, freaky ass man? Yes, yes. <laughs> freaky, freak, so right. freaky ass boy. Why you touching my chest? You are so right. Damn. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so, oh, and they wasn't even air marshals or attendants, like nothing like that. Like they were just other regular passengers. Like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. I just, you know, the white privilege, <laughs> it be white privilege sometimes. Man, that so, white privilege ain't work on that escalator. No, oh, not, no, it didn't. That's right. You ain't got no wings. <laughs> white privilege <laughs> don't give you wings. <laughs> uh, uh, Kasanet won't be prosecuted over uh, NYC riots sparked by PS5 giveaway. I respect it. And yeah, he shouldn't okay. be. I, I think he did an apology. He did. And he had to pay over. He had to pay like uh, thousands of dollars in damages. But he shouldn't have been charged for that. That was mm-hmm. the one at Union Square, right? Where he was gonna give it, and it was like yeah. thousands of kids out there. Yeah. yeah. They he was trying. To, he was trying to do the right thing. He didn't do that on purpose. Now, mind you, he did need a permit, right? But even so, you know, you're not responsible for all of these kids coming there and wilding yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Kai probably didn't even know. No. Yeah. That was gonna happen. He probably he probably was shocked at how how much of a crowd turned out for him. Correct. Yeah. In that moment. But mm-hmm. like you said, he was trying to do something positive. So mm-hmm. I'm totally okay with that. And that is just the mess right. for the day. Thank you, Jess. Appreciate mm-hmm. you. Let's get to the mix. The mix is up next. Get your request in 800 585 1051. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out the Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a salute to Angela Rye and Marilyn Mosby for joining us this morning. Man, salute to the good sister Marilyn Mosby. It's a shame. <laughs> Uh, what Marilyn Mosby is having to go through right now. She's yeah. facing 40 years mm. uh, for mortgage fraud. And if you heard the story earlier, she didn't do anything that they're accusing her of doing. Correct. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, if you want to know more, you can go to justiceformarilynmosby.com and you can sign the petition because she is trying to get a, a, a pardon right. from President Biden. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right, when we come back... Pop- Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's time to get up out of here. Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do, but I first want to say uh, my new book, Get Honest or Die Lying. It comes out May 21st, okay? It's available for pre-order right now. Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks. In a couple of weeks, uh, I'll be you know, going starting my book tour. May 21st, I actually start my book tour, man. So I'll be uh, hitting, hitting a lot of cities near you. I start my book tour... Um, Actually, May 22nd at the Barnes & Noble, 5th Avenue in New York at 1 p.m. And then I'll be at the Barnes & Noble uh, in Paramus, New Jersey at 5 p.m. So that starts on May 22nd. And then I'll be going to uh, Philadelphia and Miami and Charlton, South Carolina, of course, and Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, and D.C. and Maryland and Vegas and mm-hmm. LA. So yeah, I'll be all over the place uh starting on May twenty second. So you can go to whysmalltalksucks.com to get your tickets 
for any of those cities. And then also, your girl Just Hilarious will be in Charlotte, North Carolina, mm. at the Comedy Zone. Um, May 17th and May 18th. That's next Friday and next Saturday. We got four shows. So get your tickets at cltcomedyzone.com or my website, justhilariousofficial.com. Y'all, I'll see you in a, mi- in a might, minute, Charlotte. I might come to that. That's what's up. There's a goddamn food truck I've been wanting to try in Charlotte. And I cannot remember the name of it right now, but that food looks so damn good. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. That's Mac Wolf. <laughs> yeah, what up, Big Mac? Yo. As soon as he talks about food. Mac, yes. have you no. ever flew to Charlotte for a food truck, Mac? No, I'm not going for the food truck. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to the food Jet truck show. I want to see but it's Charlotte. Show. <laughs> Jasmine's Cuisine. Mm. Yes. Okay. Wait till I show you this chicken and this fried fish, Jess. Okay. Look at this. Hold on now. This look guy. at that. Look at that. Tell me that chicken don't look good. Oh, my God, yeah. Well, I'm going to be down there, so I'm de- I definitely will tell you how it tastes. I might come just for the food you and to might. see you. You might. Jasmine's Cuisine <laughs> Food Truck. South yeah. Charlotte, Jasmine's North Cuisine. Carolina. Yes. yes. All right. Well, when we come back, oh, you got a positive note. I do have a positive note, man. The positive note is simply this. The greatest fear in the world is the opinions of others. And the moment you are unafraid of the crowd, you are no longer a sheep. You become a lion. Okay? Remember that. Have a great day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?